Okay, welcome everybody to Noble, Oklahoma. I am Scott Harper, and I'm joined today by Randy Kersey. Uh, we will be your broadcast, uh, broadcasting crew uh, for the 2022 season. Uh, tonight's game is the first home game. It's a District 5A1 game against the Ardmore Tigers. Randy, welcome. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Ready to play some baseball. I don't think we're going to lose too many in the clouds in the uh, sun today. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's overcast. It's about 42 degrees um, uh, right now. Uh, wind out of the north. Uh, the field looks great. It's starting to green up like Coach uh, Hughes said it would. Um, yeah, it looks really nice. So the Ardmore Tigers are on the field right now. Uh, taking their pregame uh, infield and outfield. They're finishing up, and we've got about 14 minutes until game time. So we are going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back on noblebears.tv. support for the Noble Public Schools through our unique auto repairs for Bears program. Bring your car in for maintenance or repair and drop those repair receipts off at any school campus and Nathan's will give back 5% of the totals to the Noble Public School systems. We're looking forward to serving you for all your automotive needs. Go Bears! Again, the uh, Ardmore Tigers are finishing up their infield uh, right now. So let's uh, let's talk about the preseason, uh, Randy, and uh, just the scrimmage that the Bears have, uh, have played so far this year. Uh, what, what are your right. thoughts so far? Well, certainly uh, played a tough uh, scrimmage schedule. Uh, a lot of 6A teams, uh, really things started coming together at the end of last week, I think, uh, went over to Shawnee and uh, looked really good. <clears throat> first, I think that was the first scrimmage we had the basketball players. Yep. Um, yep. Sure was. Which uh, which helped a lot, obviously. A couple of couple of key players there. Um, so uh, did a good job against Shawnee last week. Uh, won that eleven to four, mm -hmm. I think that scrimmage. And then, of course, the first uh, opening game of the season was Friday at Purcell, and I thought we looked really good. I did too. Uh, uh, you know, an error-free game. I think we had one. I think we had one error one and air. Uh, no walks. No walks, uh, yeah. Caden uh, was uh, – Kaysen was uh, – he was on. Yeah. He was Kaysen Anglin is uh, and, uh, who Randy just referenced. Uh, fairly low a, pitch a count. gym yeah. on Friday night against the Purcell so Dragons. Won that so. one nine to one and uh, kind of going away. And so uh, that was a nice opener. And uh, now we get the home opener. I wish we had Friday's weather, but uh, – <laughs> You know, it's not too bad up here in the booth, No, right? it's not bad up here in the booth. Uh, I feel sorry for all the Bear fans that are having to brave that cold weather down there. Uh, we love you guys, but, uh, you know, uh, we'll stay up here where it's warm. We're too old well, and this is, uh, brittle. You know, <laughs> this, is one of those, uh, this is one of those mental toughness games, right? This is uh, – it, it's going to it's, – it's 41 now, 42 now. It's going to get colder as the, as the sun goes down. Looks like the wind has finally died down, which helps a lot. The flag is not moving in center field, so no, sure not. Uh, that helps a bunch. Because earlier today, that wind chill was was uh, not going to be fun. Um, but uh, it's uh, this is a mental toughness builder day for the for the teams and the parents, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I remember those days. It'll make those seventy degree uh, games uh, in April so much easier. So yep, yep. So coaches are exchanging lineups at the uh, uh, at home plate right now. Coach Eric Hughes for Noble, and uh, who the we got the umpires today. I know Darren Richardson is going to be in the field. In the field, yes, sir. And and uh, Lance Knight will Lance Knight. be behind the plate uh, this evening. And then once we uh, go, you know, finish up this uh, the first varsity game, uh, they'll switch and Lance will go to the field and. And Darren will go back behind the plate most likely. So, All right. but yep, there's that wind that you were talking about. It started to whip up. So yeah, I should I should I should have uh, kept my mouth shut. I guess. 
Yeah, that Oklahoma kind of, wind is stingy. Kind of a little sure. north wind coming in from left field. Yep. Um, Flag's moving that direction right now. So going over the ground rules, uh, Ardmore last year uh, had a tough season. I don't uh, uh, finish 3-19, and 19, although there have been times Ardmore's been very tough, and we know how that can change in a year. Kids get older. Yep. Um, and, you know, they may have been a real young team last year. Uh, so don't take any of them lightly. For no, sure. especially, especially not a district opponent. Right? District opponent, district game. So we got him here today. Go to Ardmore tomorrow, and uh, be be nice to get off to a good start. Hopefully the Bears can get going. Yep. Yeah, I know. Uh, as you mentioned, you know Ardmore tonight uh, here at our place, and then we go down there tomorrow evening, and then uh, Friday's game, which was. Uh, originally scheduled for 4 o'clock on Friday versus the Choctaw Yellow Jackets, has been officially moved to Thursday now uh, because of the weather moving in this weekend mm. uh, or the latter part of the week. So uh, the Bears and Yellow Jackets will do battle on, fr on Thursday now at 4 p.m., obviously weather permitting. Uh, you never can tell in spring in Oklahoma, right? So right. what Mother Nature is going to decide to do. So. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've often thought that uh, they should flip. Well, we were talking about the other day. They they really need to flip flop these seasons. It stays warm in the fall, and this is football weather out here today. So, but uh, yeah, Oklahoma Springs are unpredictable. Bears getting ready to take the field. <clears throat> yeah, and we'll do the national anthem uh, here in just a moment. And Randy and I will take a break, and uh, we'll enjoy the uh, national anthem here. Well, uh, there's the uh, national anthem. Uh, the Tigers are headed back to the dugout, to the first base dugout. Uh, Braden Harper and Colin Fisher just finished their little uh, first pitch ritual. So we're about start, uh, ready to get started here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah. Let's go through the starting lineups right now. Uh, Randy, you want to? Sure. So for the Bears, uh, uh, Carter Golish will be leading off, uh, number seven. He'll be playing center field. Kaysen Anglin at shortstop, number 10. Colin Fisher on the hill today. Uh, Colin coming off a, a, a pretty good uh, couple innings uh, Friday against Shawnee. I think he struck out everyone. I don't know. <laughs> five or six. Five or six, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris Level at third base. or Actually, Chris Level's at first base, number eight. Braden Harper will be doing the catching. Colin Thomas at third. Cooper Nash will be in left field this evening. Jake Williams at shortstop. And in right field is Jace Kelly. So hey, how about the, those Ardmore Tigers? So uh, the Tigers Andy, look like, uh, yeah, so, so their batting order will be uh, number four, Landon Eccles will lead off. He's coming to the 
to the plate now. Andrew Carpenter is on deck. He's the second baseman. Calvin Mendoza, the catcher, will bat third. Christian Skaggs, the shortstop, will hit sixth. Uh, Dakota Smith will be pitching and hitting fifth. Riley Wallace in center field. Isaiah Hernandez, or I'm sorry, Riley Wallace at first base. Hernandez in center. And the DH will be Gavin Hobbs. So we're ready for the first pitch. There is the first pitch, and the leadoff hitter for the Tigers, uh, Eccles, uh, swings through it, so it's 0-1. Fisher, here's the second pitch of the game. Gets a called strike on the outer half. 0-2. Two quick strikes. <clears throat> Way to get on top, Colin Fisher. And there's a called third strike right for, yeah, for the first strikeout of the game for Number 18, and Arkansas commit Colin Fisher. That was kind of good morning, good afternoon, and, and good, good night. night. Now batting for the Tigers, number 10. Andrew Carpenter, second baseman. Thank you very much, Randy. And that's a ball on the outside, uh, missed outside, so one ball, no strikes. Fisher comes set and deals. There's a called strike. Makes evens the count at one and one. Fisher working quickly. Swings through it. Uh, number 10 does for the Tigers, and that makes it count one ball, two one strikes. Two. Oh, breaking pitch. Yep. There's Swing the first breaking the ball. Yep, first breaking ball of the game for Fisher, so. Him and Harper seem to be dialed in right now pretty yep. well. So, and uh, you know the you know Randy mentioned previously that uh, the basketball boys just got here uh, last week. So, um, Colin included in that Jake Williams, uh, Rudd, uh, Trevor Rudd as well, Bryson Carey, are just some of the kids that just got back, just got over here to the you know to baseball last week. So. Uh, one ball and one strike on the three-hole hitter. Catcher. Uh, Mendoza, the catcher for the Tigers. Oh, a little, little movement on that pitch. Didn't look like yeah. a regular curve. Maybe a change there. A little off speed. Good placement. And Same he, pitch. Mendoza swings through that for the third strike out of the inning. Uh, really good inning by Colin Fisher. Really efficient. How many pitches was that, Randy? So that was 11 pitches, and uh, nine of them were strikes. Wow. <laughs> so we'll take that. Yeah, we'll take that every single inning, Colin, if you can do that. So uh, we'll take a break, ladies and gentlemen. We'll come back with uh, the Bears uh, in the bottom half of the first inning. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. It's no secret Pioneer Cellular cares about the students of our communities because we're in your communities with more retail locations than any other carrier in western Oklahoma. It's no secret that we provide opportunities for students to learn remotely with distance learning plans and MiFi devices. We also help these schools live stream their games so family members across the country don't miss the action. We sponsor schools and colleges because your 
children deserve the best. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Tigers have finished warming up, and they're in the bottom half of the first inning. Uh, pitching for the Ardmore Tigers this afternoon, young man Dakota Mitchell, number seven. Leading off for the Bears, number seven, Carter Goish. Carter led off the season last uh, Friday night with, uh, I believe, a first pitch triple over the center fielder's head. So he had a good game. Yes, he did. Uh, that first pitch is outside for ball one. Golish, a junior. Chopper foul. Yep. So that'll Davis. even the count at one and one. This is one of those days when you don't want to hit that ball anything but square on the barrel because <laughs> you get the bees in the hands. Yes, that's exactly right. And we have a couple of young men that uh, that don't wear batting gloves. I don't know if you've noticed that, Randy, but uh, I always wore batting gloves. So <laughs> Mitchell misses inside uh, with a breaking ball. That'll make it two balls and one strike. Golish climbs back in the box. Here comes the delivery by Mitchell. Golish swings through it. And threw it. Two balls, two strikes. Golish was two for four, scored three runs on uh, Friday night in the opener. Uh, that's for sale. Yeah, that's exactly what you <clears> want <throat> from a leadoff. You want your right? leadoff man. Got to get on base. Be a run scorer. Yep. Let those big bats behind him. Push him in. Pitches outside by Mitchell. It's going to make a full count. Pay off pitch. Carter Golish hits a ball in the gap. That's going to get over the center fielder's head all the way almost to the fence for a leadoff double for number seven, Carter Golish of the Noble Bears. Very good. That's a good way to saw start the game. Of, saw a lot of pitches. Yep. Took them deep in the count and then made them pay. That's uh, that's what you want. And the next young man coming up to the, to the box for the Bears is number 10, Kaysen Anglin. Kaysen had him a very good evening, uh, first night out on Friday. Uh, yeah, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, pitched really well, hit the ball really well. Mitchell comes set. Golish gets good lead. Here's the bunt down the third base line, trying to move that base runner over. It goes foul, so Mitchell gets ahead. Courtesy of that foul ball, it'll be uh, no balls and one strike. Nice job by the third baseman charging that, landing Eccles, and keeping it foul. Kaysen does a good job when he's, when he's swinging, using the entire field. That, that good pop to left, a little turn on one on the inside. Yeah, he does a nice job of taking the ball to the opposite field for sure. There's a ball down. Took the bun off on that one. Yep. So one ball, one strike on Anglin. Golish still at second base. Let's see if they put the bunt back on here. Randy, what do you think? way Kaysen's yep. been swinging it. I'm not sure you take yeah. the bat out of his hands, yeah. right? Yeah. Ground ball score, Carter. Carter can fly. Yeah. He can move. That's a good point. So. Two balls, one strike as uh, Mitchell missed outside with the breaking ball there.
wow, in case an England turns on that inside pitch and hits it to the bus barn almost. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes foul, fortunate for, fortunately for the Tigers. Um, but that's what the kids nowadays call breaking necks, Randy. Uh-huh. I saw that this weekend, breaking necks. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the count's even at two and two. But uh, I promise you, Mitchell is glad the wind is blowing across there. Yep. So. And Mitchell Popped him up. gets Anglin to pop up. Shortstop comes over, makes the play for out number one. And that shortstop is Skaggs. Christian Skaggs. Skaggs. And that's going to bring to the plate number 18, Colin Fisher. Colin. Colin had a tough night offensively Friday night, but you give him a pass because he hadn't been out for very yeah, long. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, he he was uh, shooting free throws not too long yep, ago. So uh, exactly right. So and if I know uh, Colin and his daddy, they did some work this <laughs> weekend. What do you think? I promise you, Shane had him in the cages. Yes, you're exactly <laughs> right. So so goal is still at second base, and there's a ball hitting the gap. That's going to get over the right yep. fielder's head. Gets to the fence. Fisher rounding second base, headed to third. Golish comes around to score, and that's what we're looking for there from Colin Fisher right there. That's an RBI triple. I knew they were in the Fisher. cage this weekend. So those, that trip to the cage is paid off, right? Boy, put a charge in that. Yeah, and that's you know that's something that uh, my son Braden and I talk about, Randy, a lot is is using the entire field, mm -hmm. right, and using the gaps because Noble's high, you know, Noble's field is so big that if you use those gaps, you're guaranteed a double, and in some cases like that right there, a triple. So Right. Looks like Graves is going to be courtesy runner for Fisher on third. Number 22. Now, this guy's been red hot. Scott. Oh, wow. <laughs> he has really been hitting the ball hard. Uh, Chris Chris is uh, he's, he's in the zone right now. Hopefully he stays there. Yeah, you're exactly right. He has just been tearing the cover off the ball the entire preseason. So that's why he's hitting in the cleanup spot. There's Mitchell's first pitch down for ball one. Fisher remains at third base. One out, one ball, no no strikes. Bears lead the Tigers one nothing. Here comes the second pitch of the at-bat. Chris Lavelle. By Mitchell. Misses outside, low and away. For Being ball careful. Two. Yep. It's probably a pretty good idea. Yep. If they've done their scouting report or watched any of Noble's preseason games, then their scrimmages, don't they know that Chris Lavelle is just hammering the ball. So, And there it is. There it goes again. Line, yep. Solid line, line drive, drive left. in left field. RBI for That's Chris RBI. Lavelle. Graves comes in to score to make it two to nothing Bears. Lavelle's going to remain at first base and run for himself. And here comes the Ardmore head coach out to take a visit with Mr. Mitchell. Well, Batting for the Bears. I'm sorry, go ahead, Randy. No, I was just going to say Dakota's not missing too many bats right now so far. <laughs> Long conversation with uh, the Ardmore head coach, with uh, Dakota Mitchell. That's five RBIs already in the season for Lovell. He's uh, wow, and that's following up four that didn't count on the on the records, I guess, on this on the scrimmage from uh, Friday night because he yep. had he had four RBIs there and a home run. So he's in the zone. Yep, he is. Uh, everything's a beach ball right now. Everything for looks big. Yep. So. Everything's slow and everything looks big. Uh, now hitting for the Bears, number 16, senior Braden Harper. Carl Albert State commit, Braden Harper. Lavelle leads off at first. Mitchell comes set. Harper swings through the pitch. Strike one. 1-1 one, one to Harper.
two to nothing Bears in the bottom of the first inning. There's a ball hit down the right side. I think it's going to go foul. Just barely. Yep. Just got under it a little bit. Had a good idea there. That pitch was on the outside and trying to take it to right. Just got under that a little. Yep. So no balls and two strikes to Harper. Mitchell's still uh, pitching for the Tigers. Lavelle's still at first base. Well, they're really playing. That left fielder is really playing. And boy, that left field line's open. Yeah. I'd like to see that pitcher miss a little middle in here. Yeah, they're really squeezing the, the end, uh -huh. you know, the, the middle part of the field in the outfield. So there's a ball down in the dirt for ball one of the at bat. One ball, two strikes. Big hole between short and third, too. Oh wow, yeah, you're exactly don't, right. Don't quite, uh, don't quite understand that, but uh, I guess I don't have to. <laughs> Harper gets back in the box. Mitchell comes set. Runners on the on the move. There's a ball down the third base line goes foul, and Lavelle was moving. Yeah, he was. A little hit and run. Mm -hmm. I, you know, uh, third baseman's playing in. Which is uh, is in? He's in and he's guarding the line. Uh, Braden can get that ball a little to the to the to right, the right. Him, and that's a base hit. Yep. So Harper gets back in the box. One ball, two strikes, one out. Lavelle at first base for the Bears. Bears up two nothing. Mitchell comes set. There's another foul ball. So seeing a lot of pitches. Yep. That's already 16 pitchers, pitches. Mm. So uh, that'll be around with only one out in the inning. Yeah, that's gonna it's gonna make for a short day for Mr. Mitchell unless he's planning on throwing about 120. So, yeah. which I don't think anybody's gonna be throwing that this early in the season. Well, nice pick that third. So Harper grounds out to third baseman. And that was Landon Eccles. Makes the nice throw over to first base, and the first baseman digs it out of the dirt. Uh, nice nice pick by Riley Wallace. Lavelle moves over to second base. And that's going to bring to the plate number 33, Colin Thomas, CT as we like to call him. CT's been swinging a good bat as well. Yes, he has. Junior, Colin Thomas. There's a ball that gets away from the catcher. Lavelle stays at uh, second base, though. Mendoza, that kind of is shooted by him a little bit and right behind the plate. Collins played a little bit of everywhere in preseason. He's at third today. Yep, he can play third, short. I'm sorry, short, uh, second, third. Uh, he can pitch. You can, you can roll him into the outfield yep, as well. He's played some left field this uh, preseason. Lavelle playing the cat and mouse game out there at second base. Trying to get draw the throw from Mitchell. Two down. Be nice to get that other run in. A base hit will probably get it done. Boy, that left fielder, he's almost playing center field, Scott. My goodness. Wow, he has shaded way to the right, isn't he? Yeah. Hopefully the Bears recognize that and, and try to use that, you know, that left field line to their advantage. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, and assuming that Ardmore's doing that on purpose, that first that pitcher sure does not want to be pitching middle end. He sure wants to stay away. Yep. Because that middle of the end's easy to pull. Mitchell misses outside. Three balls, no strikes, two outs for the Tigers. In. Yep. Let's give him a shot at it. 
So Thomas draws the walk. He's going to move over to first base. Lavelle remains at second. Coming to the plate for the Bears now, number 12, Cooper Nash. Cooper's been swinging a hot bat, too. Yeah, you and I have talked about Cooper's bat. He, he's got such quick hands and, and just great, tremendous bat speed. So he likes to shoot the ball down the right field line and there's a foul ball, so Mitchell gets ahead 0-1 on Nash. Cooper was two for three the other night, uh, Friday night, had drove in a couple of runs against uh, Purcell. So he's off to a good start. Up in the front of that box. Yeah, he is. Yeah, and Mitchell's not, you know, he's he's not throwing near as hard as some of the guys that that uh, the Bears have faced this preseason. So uh, there's the ground ball by Nash. He grounds out to the first baseman, uh, Riley Wallace. That's for out number three. And it's going to remain two to nothing Bears as we head to the top of the second inning. Good start for the Bears. Yep, yep. We'll be right back on NobleBears.tv. Pioneer Cellular. It's no secret. Stream with Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. Okay, welcome everybody back. Uh, the Bears uh, have taken their top of the second inning uh, infield. They're ready to go. We're going to wait on the Ardmore coach to make his way over to the third base dugout. Shortstop Skaggs leading off. Swing and a miss on a pitch down. Fisher gets ahead 0-1 on the count. Skag swing, swings through that for strike number two. Chased one, chased one up in the zone there. He might get one a little bit higher than that now. <laughs> <laughs> two strike. No. Painted, painted oh. the bottom of the zone. He went Greg Maddox on him. Yeah, Andy. he did. So... Yeah, so out number one, uh, strikeout number four. Number four. Strikeout number four for Fisher already as we welcome Dakota Mitchell, the pitcher. Strike one. Swung through the first pitch for strike one. <clears throat> Swings through the next pitch for strike two. Collins getting it and firing it. Yep, he is not wasting any time. That one gets away and to the backstop for ball number one. Harper's going to walk out and visit with Mr. Fisher. That might have been mixed up a little bit there. Yeah, a little cross up or, or, you know, he's throwing so well. When he throws a ball, you think, what's wrong? <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> Because that's what. Like, what are you doing out here, yeah. man? Messing around. <laughs> He's got 11 pitches and, and uh, eight strikes. Eight strikes, yeah. That's efficiency right there, guys. He misses outside there for ball number two. Two balls, two strikes, and one out. No reason to get cute here. Just stick with what's working, you know. They haven't shown that. Yeah, you don't want to speed up their bat. They, right. they can't catch up. So, yeah, back to the 
breaking ball. Well, we got the call. Got the call on the outside corner there. So strikeout number six on the day for Colin Fisher. And that's going to bring to the plate first baseman Riley Wallace, number 24. On deck for the Tigers is Isaiah Hernandez, the center fielder. Fisher misses with that pitch. One ball, no strikes. Hernandez, I'm oh, sorry, Wallace swings through that pitch. Kind of handcuffed him there. Yeah, got in on his hands and swung through it. One ball, one strike. There's a oh. called strike on the outside half for strike two. And he swings through that one, does Wallace for out number three and strike out number six yep. on the day for Colin Fisher. So the Bears head to the bottom of the second, up two to nothing. Leading off for the Bears will be number nine, Jake, Jake Williams. Williams, when we come back. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back on NobleBears.tv. Our legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horns, and we are here to help. time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. All right, bottom of the second. Bears up 2 nothing. Jake Williams coming to bat, second baseman. Coda Smith uh, still on the hill for Ardmore. Threw a lot of pitches in the first inning. So the Bears getting a good look at him. First pitch misses down and away. So one ball, no strikes on Jake Williams. Jake was another one of those uh, basketball kids that came over, right. uh, you know, just last week, Randy, and he started off the se uh, you know the season swinging the bat really well as well. So he swings through that one and evens the count at one and one for Mitchell. Good looking curveball, but just missed down. Two balls, one strike on Jake Williams Jr. Number nine. Has a brother that plays on the Bears this year. He's a freshman, and that's Colton Williams. Mitchell misses down and away. Three balls, one strike on Jake. Jake kind of will go back and forth uh, short and second this yep. year, I believe. Yep. 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 And he'll, Playing second uh, base tonight, today. Oh, oh, that ball was, that ball's a little outside, but he got the call. But, yep. you know, Colin got one like that last inning, too, so, uh, so we're even. Let's, uh, so that's going to make it a full count on number nine, Jake Williams. It was a ball, a hot shot, and it hit down the right. He made it. He and beat it. Jake hustles down yeah. to first base and beats it out. The first baseman 
uh, kind of juggled it and it shot behind him. So nice job yeah. of hustling down the line by Jake Williams. Had a little collision over there. Yeah. Jake looks like he's okay. Coach Hughes is on his way over to check. And now headed back, but uh, did a good job of going with the pitch there. Uh, hit it hard to right right side and just kind of handcuffed first baseman. Well, and that's something that you know you got to protect with two strikes. You know? Right. So right. Anything close, you got to be swinging the bat. Got to put a barrel on it. So, so Jake uh, gets on. Uh, Jace first Kelly. Base. That's Jace Kelly. That's the bat playing right, right field there. today. He shows bunt and then pulls back. Ball misses. Down. One ball, no strikes. Nobody out. Coach Hughes and trying to get uh, Jake over into scoring position. Yeah, and Jake's a threat to, to run as well. Takes the run off. Swung through that one. Yeah, good cut by Jace Kelly, though. Evens the count at one and one. Got the call. Yep. And Kelly, uh, Jace uh, showed bun on that one as well and then pulled back. but Dropped uh, that breaking ball on the outside there, outside yep. corner. One and two, so probably no bunt now. He put the ball in play. Yep. You gotta, just like we were just talking about, right? You got to protect. Yep. So yep. anything close, you got to put a barrel on it. That left fielder is still... <laughs> I mean, he must have dug him a hole out there or something because he's playing everybody right there, and that is just way into center field. There goes Williams, and there's the hard-hit ball nice. down the right field line by Kelly, and that's going to bring Williams around to score. Kelly's going to make it to uh, second base and hold there. Nice RBI double by Jace Kelly. Makes the bear, uh, score Bears three, Ardmore Tigers zero in the bottom of the second inning. Got that fastball middle in and turned on it. Drove it hard. You know, usually when the ball is hit to the right of the first baseman, it doesn't end, end up being a double. Right. Right? But that one did. Yep. And Jace, Jace can move a little bit. Yeah, and no different than the left fielder we're talking about. The right yeah, fielder. he's really out of position. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure you can see at home, ladies and gentlemen, but the left fielder and the right fielder, they're squeezing the middle of the outfield, which is unusual. That ball squirts away from the catcher with Golish batting. And uh, Jace Kelly's going to hustle over to third base. And Golish is going to be ahead in the count, one nothing. And Golish singled or doubled in his first at-bat? Golish doubled over the center fielder yeah. uh, his first time up. He's uh, swinging a hot bat as well. Mitchell, here's the pitch. There's a called mm. strike. One ball, one strike on Golish. There's a chopper. chopper towards the middle of the infield, and Golish is going to beat that out. Yep. And Runner holds. Runner stays at third base. And when that ball, when the infielders are coming in, Randy, mm -hmm. like they were just then, you, you keep that runner at third base. You agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, third baseman made a good break on the ball. Uh, uh, goal is just quick down that line. And, yeah, yeah if we would have tried to come home, he'd have just turned and, and fired home. So, all right. We'll goal is to be moving here on this first pitch, and there he goes. Catcher uh, fakes the throw down to second base, but goal is, uh moves over safely. So, we have runners at second and third now for – the two-hole hitter of the Bears, Case and Anglin. Anglin fouls that one off down the left field line. Case was three for four Friday night. What about his pitching stats on Friday night, Randy? Do you have those handy? You got a grounder to a second. Hard That's ground ball bring a to run the second home. baseman. 
second baseman makes the play over at first to get Anglin for the first out of the inning. But Jace Kelly, uh, after the double, comes in to score and makes it uh, four to nothing Bears. And we still have Golish uh, at third base moves now. to third. Yep. So, so we got one, uh, one out. Yeah, one out, four nothing. Balling up, double to right, right field the first time up. Oh, no, he tripled, right? Tripled, you're right. He yep. tripled. Yep. Kind of right center. Yeah, he hit that gap, and yep. they're the right fielder. <laughs> There's a ball that gets away from the catcher, but not far enough for goalers to advance. I think it's two balls. Two, two balls, balls, no strikes on Fisher. He's 2-0. Oh, so... Hitters count here. He's got to come in there. Ooh. Good pitch by Mitchell, and he gets the called strike on Fisher to make the count two balls and one strike. So normally you'd, you'd possibly think about pitching around Fisher here and setting up a double play, but you don't like your odds with the guy on deck either. No, you do not. So uh, Mitchell misses down and in on that pitch. 3-1. Mitchell, every time, uh, after every pitch, he's stepping off and blowing, you know, blowing into his hand. I think yeah. the, you know, he doesn't have, doesn't look like he has sleeves on, so. And Fisher draws the walk. So he reaches base for the second time today. And here comes the aforementioned uh, Chris LaBelle. And uh, we're going to have a courtesy runner for uh, Colin Fisher, the pitcher. pitcher. And that is going to be number 22, Zach Graves. Yeah. All right. So, so again, one out. Yeah, so one out. Scoreboard uh, shows none, but we've got one yeah. out. First and third, so Ardmore looking for a double play ball here. That ball is going to get away, and here comes Golish. He's going to score on the pass ball. And Graves moves over to second base. And it's going to be one ball, no strikes on LaBelle. Five nothing Bears, bottom of the second. Uh, one out, so. Putting a lot of pressure on uh, on Ardmore. Yep. Another one in the dirt. Yeah, and and Mitchell actually fell down on that pitch, Randy. So he might he might be having a hard time with the footing out there on the mound. Yep. Uh, looks pretty dry. Uh, yeah. I know we got a little bit of rain la uh, yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening, overnight. Um, so. There's a line right shot the middle. that's going to get through into center field for a single for Lavelle, in. and that's going to bring Graves around to score. That's going to make it uh, six to nothing Bears. Chris nice job by Chris Lavelle again. Just keeps hitting those uh, hitting those line drives. That's six RBIs <laughs> in the young season. Wow, and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, seven and what seven and. Uh, a, Third inning, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to believe. I don't. I can't tell from. We can't see from our vantage point if somebody from Ardmore is warming up. But they got to be getting close. We're, yeah, I we're nearly so. at fifty pitches here in just the second inning. Yeah. Batting for the Bears now, number sixteen, Braden Harper. There's a called strike. Yeah, Harper uh, hit a hard ground ball and uh, to the third baseman in his first at bat, and uh, the third baseman threw him out. So Oop. and there's something that happens pretty frequently for uh, <laughs> Braden Harper. He gets hit quite often. It helps that on so, base percentage, but yep. you don't want to do that on a day like today, Scott. No, you don't. <laughs> I'm going to hear about that, that hurts a little extra. he gets home this evening. That so. hurts a little extra hard. 
So Harper he, draws the uh, hit by pitch. Derek and Davis. Is Derek Davis run. is going to run for the Bears. Courtesy for, runner for the for catcher. Braden. And the Ardmore head coach is back out there to visit with uh, Dakota Mitchell one more time. And as Randy mentioned, we can't see the bullpen from our vantage point. Uh, but I would almost bet that somebody is down there warming up, and he's pretty close. He is at 50 pitches, 26 strikes, 24 balls, so not a great uh, – Not a ball, good uh, ball. You know, he throws a lot of breaking ball balls, and that's hard on a day like today. You know, the breaking ball on a cold day, that's – you've got to have that feel. And uh, it's kind of try, like trying to make a pool cue ball spin. Yep. Right? That so ball's slick, hard, and it's hard to get slick. a grip on it. Hard to get a grip on, and so he's had some control problems where Colin's got a little bit of an advantage. Advantage, he just kind of burn your head off with it, you know. So <laughs> he doesn't have to throw curveballs probably in a game like this. But uh, and so the Ardmore head coach is uh, going to get a visit from uh, home plate umpire Lance Knight. He's going to walk yeah. out and kind of speed things up speed and things up. Say, hey, coach, I'm. I'm a little cold back here. Yep. No action. <laughs> so uh, Yardmore coach makes his way back to the first base dugout. He's Home sticking umpire. with him. Yep, he's staying with him. So uh, home plate umpire Lance Knight makes his way back behind the catcher. And that's going to bring number 33, Colin Thomas, to the plate. Whatever the head coach Whatever he for said, it, it worked. It worked, right? So. It's, maybe it was something like, you know, do you want to ride the bus home or not? <laughs> so uh, Mitchell gets ahead in the count, 0-1. Uh, what did uh, Colin Thomas do in his last at-bat, Randy? Well, Colin, uh, he walked. He walked, okay. Yep, walked in the first. Four-pitch yep. walk. Four-pitch walk. So that's the first strike he's seen. So Derek Davis leads off first. LaBelle leads off second. Colin Thomas is waiting. He swings through that. Good looking cut, but uh, just got through it a little bit. Yep. So Mitchell gets ahead in the count, 0-2. And, and I know he has that curveball, Randy, but I stay with the fastball right here if I'm him. I mean, he's – Yeah, make him uh... – And uh, he does yeah. stay with the fastball, but it gets away from the catcher, and the runners are going to advance to second and third. Lavelle moves over to third. Derek Davis moves over to second. Second wild pitch of the inning. Yep. Down in the dirt. Oh, Chris can move when he has to. When that ball kind of squirted out toward third base, I was wondering if he should have done that, but he got there plenty of time. <laughs> Mitchell misses outside. 2-2. Two, two. Got to protect. Well, and that's so Short, important, right? I mean. Yeah, shortstop's playing in. Second baseman's deep. Yep. You're going to give up a run there. Thomas fouls that one off. Keeps the at-bat alive. Two balls, two strikes. One out for the Tigers in the yep. bottom of the second inning. The Bears are. Pushed four runs across already uh, here in the bottom. In their Colin bottom. was out in front of that ball there. He he's, he's got, needs to let it travel a little more. Yep, let, let I it, agree. Let it run a little more. He's got to be a little patient. See it. And there's the first uh, strikeout of the day, if I'm not mistaken, for Mitchell. Thomas goes down swinging for out number two. Yep, two down. And Cooper, Cooper Nash comes Cooper. to the plate. And Cooper singled in his first at bat, Randy. Is that right? Uh, Cooper grounded out. Grounded, grounded out, out, out to the first baseman. Grounded out to the first yeah. baseman. Hit the ball hard, but swings through that pitch. And like I said, that that talk that uh, the Ardmore head yeah, coach had with Mitchell uh, must have worked because he's been money uh, since then. So make him pay, Cooper. There you go. Get well hit. Head. Oh, caught. nice play by the right fielder for the Tigers, and that is Andrew Mendoza. Yep. So Mendoza that's out number three. 
And Bears get four, though. Yep. Like those crooked numbers. Yep. We'll take the four spot every every inning. So we'll be right back on noblebears.tv. Hey guys, Nathan, Nathan's Automotive, proud supporter of Noble Athletics. We work on all makes and models specializing in diesel engine repairs. I'm so proud to show our support for the Noble Public Schools through our unique Auto Repairs for Bears program. Bring your car in for maintenance or repair and drop those repair receipts off at any school campus and Nathan's will give back 5% of the totals to the Noble Public School System. We're looking forward to serving you for all your automotive needs. Go Bears! All right, so the Bears lead 6 nothing after two. Colin Fisher finishing his warm-up tosses. Throw down to second. So coming up for Ardmore, 7-8-9, center fielder, Isaiah Hernandez. Colin been very efficient. 17 pitches. There's a strike. He swings through. Kind of tried to bunt there. 18 pitches now and 15 strikes, Scotty. Wow. That's uh I don't know if you can ask for much better than that. Right? He, I mean, he missed another bunt attempt. The Ardmore coach is just kind of scratching his head like I'm I'm yeah. just, all I'm asking you to do is put the bat on the ball. Fisher misses up high there and outside. Well, the cold weather definitely not bothering Colin today. Hernandez swings through that one. So strikeout number seven on the day. Right, seven yeah. strikeouts. Gavin Hobbs. Is the DH number thirty for the Tigers? I bet if I go look at that Ardmore football roster, he's on it, Randy. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're right. Fisher misses outside for ball one of the at bat. Bears lead six nothing in the top of the third inning. There's the breaking ball breaking called ball. strike. Yeah. One and one. And I'm 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 sure you guys can see that at home, but that that's just a nasty pitch, Randy. And yeah, uh, that's going to be hard for. Well, and you you know you you got you just ooh high and in that'll get your attention. Yeah. Mr. Hobbs might uh three one think twice about digging in too deep. So yep. there's a called strike. Even uh, makes the count full on Hobbs. Well, and you know, as hard as Collins throwing, you you know, those guys are trying to catch up to that fastball and then he throws that sweeper in there and yep. you know, they're all out on their front foot. <laughs> you know, it's kinda like swatting at a B. Yeah. So that's strikeout number eight for uh, number 18 of the Bears, Colin Fisher. There's a called strike. Andrew Mendoza is a right fielder, made yeah. a nice play at nice the end play of the last inning. Last inning. Yeah. Yeah, exactly well hit right. ball. I don't know if it was textbook as far as how he played that ball. Got I it think done. It didn't get the done. grass. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take it. Yeah. So we went one in the dirt there. Harper moves outside. Fisher misses up high. I think that's where uh, good Harper spot. Was, yeah, that's, that's a good two-strike pitch right there. Yeah, I think that's exactly where little, Harper was looking for. Yep, so just a little out of the zone, trying to get into chase. And Fisher misses down and away on that pitch to Mendoza. Evens the count at two. So we got trip twos up there, Randy. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. 
And breaking ball. Uh, yeah, Mendoza swings through the breaking ball for out number three and strikeout number nine on the day for Fisher. Uh, he's been perfect so far, Randy. Um, yep. Very three, efficient. Yeah. 32 pitches, 23 strikes, nine up, nine down, all yep. by strikeout. Not going to get much better than that. So uh, extremely uh, very well done by Colin. So he and Harper are dialed in for sure. Uh, Mitchell coming back out Mitchell's again. Mitchell's coming back out. So Finished the last inning pretty strong. He did. Got he some did. help from the right fielder there, but uh, yeah. who's uh, who's leading off for us, Randy? So the Bears are at Jake Williams, second baseman. Okay, they're eight nine one. Williams, Kelly, and Golish. And Jake. Uh, Jake reached on an error for error. hard hit ball. The first baseman misplayed. And, right. Uh, and then Kelly had the double. Kelly the doubled right. him home. That's yeah. right. So, uh, so it's not getting any easier for no. uh, Mr. Dakota Mitchell. What are we looking at on the day? How many hits for the Bears? And uh, so Bears got six runs on six hits, left four on base. Very good. Very good. Ardmore has not had a base runner. Mitchell finishing his warm up tosses. Mendoza has a little visit with the uh, home plate umpire Lance Knight. Says, can you do something about this Fisher kid on the mound? Because <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, at bat number two on the day for number nine. Uh, I like to call him J. Will, Jake Williams. There's a hard ground ball hit to the shortstop. He bobbles it, and he is not going to beat. Yeah. Williams is going to beat that out. So. Another really nice job of hustling down the line for Jake Williams. He beat that ball out in the in his first at bat as well. Right. So right, you don't you, know, uh, you don't have time to bubble. Nope. So Jake is obviously in great shape coming out of basketball season. So yeah. Kelly's going to come to the plate, number fifteen for the Bears. A long double the first inning. And there's a fly ball that's going to be oh, trouble. That's a flare. Oh. Nice. Oh, oh. looks like he had it. Well, they're going to they're gonna gonna get double. Jake on the force. Yeah. So the, Jake was kind of in no man's land there. Yeah. And if he goes too far, then he's going to get doubled off at first. Right. So, uh, and the, the shortstop actually bobbled it, and the ball hit, dropped and hit the ground. Uh, but because uh, he was already, you know, he wasn't far enough to second base that they doubled him off and for out number one of the inning. And that's going to get us back to the top of the lineup. Carter's two for two had the double over the center fielder's head and then the chopper that he beat out for a single, infield single. Mitchell misses outside on the first pitch of the at-bat. One ball, no strikes. Kelly leads off at first base. There's a ground ball, a little nubber hit down in no man's um, land that Golish well, is going to beat out for uh, hit number three on the day yeah. by Carter Golish. Sometimes it's more important where you hit it than how you hit it. And yeah, and <laughs> I think the second baseman was moving because Kelly was going, yeah. and the first baseman, he didn't really even have a, a chance to at it, and it got <coughs> well, by the pitcher right. Mitchell. So. He, well, he's holding the runner on first, and that right. ball is just a little too far out there. Normally, you'd like to see your first baseman try to make that play and the pitcher cover, but uh, first baseman in holding Jake on first is a little bit of a disadvantage there. There's a called strike in the first pitch of the at-bat to number 10 and junior, Kaysen Anglin. Kaysen has flied out and grounded out today, hit the ball well both times, yep. but... Uh, where Carter's hitting them uh, where there isn't anybody, Kaysen's kind of hitting it to them today. So that's the way it goes sometimes. Well, and, and Kaysen's really close, though, Randy, because he had that long fly ball that he hit to the bus barn. So yep. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he does have the longest hit of the day. It just yep. wasn't fair. It just wasn't fair. So comes in, uh, Mitchell comes inside on England there, and he, you know, Hits it down, hits it foul down the first base line. Turned on that breaking pitch down and in. Yeah, and that got in on his hands. And you can see Anglin shaking it off. So Yeah, that doesn't feel good. No. Not at all. Not on a day like today. Doesn't bother you so much when it's 
75, 80 right. degrees outside. But on a day like today when it's below 40, you're going you're gonna to feel that. So nice job of staying alive by Anglin. One ball, two strikes, one out. One away. Kelly on second's got good good wheels. You know, you mentioned wheels, and uh, I coached Jace whenever he was a young man. Nice job by England, staying alive. I coached him whenever he was a young man for about three or four years, and that was his nickname. Uh, we called him Wheels. <laughs> so. I actually played ball with his dad, Ed Kelly, and graduated with his mom, Angie. So All right. Comes the pitch. Oh, swing and a miss. Yeah, first base is occupied, so Anglin's going to be out. Uh, the runners do advance, though. Right, on the pass ball. On the pass ball. So, Golish moves over to second, and Kelly moves over uh, mm -hmm. to third. Kelly to third, oh. so Colin up. Colin tripled his first time up and drew a base on balls last time. So two out, be nice to uh, put another crooked number up here with a base hit. High and away, ball one. He got under that one, boy, he hit it a mile high. Center fielder coming in, he got it. So nice job by uh, Mitchell, Mitchell there, right? Yeah, held, uh, held us scoreless in that bottom of the third left inning. Two on. So. That's uh, six left on base so far. So I know that uh, Coach Hughes is going to like uh, six runs and seven hits in three innings, but he doesn't probably like that six left on base. Too yeah, much. exactly. Well, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, come back and join us for the top of the fourth inning, where leading off for the Tigers will Landon be Landon Eccles. Eccles. We'll be right back on NobleBears.tv. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and on. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the first pitch uh, in the top of the fourth inning from Fisher. Outside for ball one. Second time through the order, so uh, Ardmore's getting their second look at Colin. Fisher misses there as well. That's going to make it two balls and no strikes. There's a called strike on the inside half. Two balls, one strike. That was, uh, we'll take it. There's a called strike for strike number two. Colin working quick. Is that a called strike, Randy? Strike three, Sw uh, swinging. swinging? Uh, up okay. in the zone, swung through it. Yep. Strikeout number six. Number 10. Number 10 on the day. So 10 batters up, 10 batters down, all by K. All by strikeout. Andrew Carpenter, second baseman, 
swings at the first one. A little change up there, maybe. Got out ahead of that. Yep. And Randy, uh, I was just uh, looking uh, or visiting with Matt Lorenz, um, and he said we have uh, a total of 175 viewers on that have All joined right. us this afternoon. There's the first uh, at bat of the day that didn't end in a K, and that's a hard ground ball that uh, Lavelle fields and flips over to uh, Fisher. Colin covering, nice, uh, nice job there. Yep, for out number two of the inning. Three hole hitter takes strike one. And that is Calvin Mendoza, the catcher. Swings through for strike number two. All right, he's got him set up. He can kind of do whatever he wants to here. 0 and 2. This is outside for ball one of the at bat. Looks like that came out of his hand a little funny. I don't know if he was trying to throw a change or a curveball there, but didn't get a good uh, good grip on that. Swings through that pitch as well for out number three of the inning. That's going to be uh, strikeout number 11 on the day for yep. Fisher. And so. that's going to get us to the bottom, uh, the home half of the, bo uh, the fourth inning. Uh, bottom of the four. Bears six, Ardmore Tigers zero. What are your thoughts so far, Randy? Well, the Bears have hit the ball well. Uh, obviously, uh, Colin is on today, and uh, 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 but uh, you, you like the way they've hit the ball. Even the inning, even the inning that they did not score in, they left men on base, so they were they were putting men on. Um, so uh, Bears look good. Bottom four up six nothing. Um, Total control here. Ardmore sending Dakota Smith back out again after uh, after a scoreless inning in the third. So uh, Bears got uh, Lovell, Harper, and Thomas up four, five, six. So uh, need to do some more damage here. Yeah, Scott, put you another gotta, crooked number up there. Yeah, you got to get some more runs here. And uh, I know we mentioned it uh, earlier. Uh, Ardmore is a District 5A1 uh, opponent, so Mitchell's going to stay out there, and you're right, we've got to put uh, some more runs on the board. Uh, I think you mentioned previously seven seven hits on six, or six runs on seven six hits, runs, right? seven hits, yep. Yeah, and yep. we just got the one strikeout, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mitchell struck out one, so. Yeah, so, um, I mean, everybody's having good at-bats. Uh and that's important. That's that's that's, that's yeah. Really and they're nice. seeing seeing a lot of pitches. He's yeah. at seventy pitches now after three innings. So that's gotcha. uh, that's good. See a lot of pitches, and uh, that that helps a lot. You uh, get more comfortable every pitch you see. You you kind of see everything that the pitcher's got to offer, and the more the more you get to see him, the, the more locked in you can get. So yeah, here's Mr. Line Drive so far <laughs> this year. He is uh, speaking to Mr. About and, Mr. Uh, Chris Lavelle, and he hits. He, uh, he hammers that one pretty good too, all the way uh, to the fence, but caught. Nice by job the by center the center fielder. fielder. Nice yeah. job. He just kind of Isaiah Hernandez moved up over in the air a little bit. That's about as far as you can hit the ball without it going out of this ballpark. So. First pitch, boy, he jumped on it. Cold day like today, that ball doesn't carry either. You know, you get uh, another month into the season, that ball's probably down in the woods. Yep, that's in the pine trees out there. So, at bat number three on the day for Harper. Braden is grounded out and was hit by a pitch. So, uh, six ball one. Mitchell misses outside for ball number two. Hitters count right here and look for Braden to be swinging. Yep. Yeah, Mitchell's got to come in here. Misses Hitting. again. Yep, misses outside. Ball three of the at bat. So what do you do? You have him swinging here, Scotty, or are you? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, if I'm if I'm Coach Hughes, I give him the green light this early in the season. He does not have the green light, though, and that's well, a strike. And that's an outside corner. He may just not like that. Yeah. 
that's not a great hitter's pitch right there. Nope. When you're up 3-0, you don't really want to chase that. There's another fly ball that's hit into center field that the center fielder Hernandez comes up and makes the nice catch. Out number two of the inning. Here comes Colin Thomas. He's walked and struck out. Two out for the Bears, so. Mitchell settling in after yeah. uh, 76 pitches now. So just he should have just warmed up longer, Scotty. <laughs> he should have had that second, uh, that Armour coach should have had that second talk with him in the first inning. Yeah, or or he just should have started <laughs> warming up about an hour and a half before the game started. I yeah. don't know. He needed more, more warm-ups or something. But. Thomas swings through the first pitch, 0-1. Mitchell misses uh, down and away. Ball in the dirt. Evens the count at one. Another ball down and away. 3-0. and oh. Okay, now so how, how do you give him the green light? 3-0, and oh, two out. Uh, I think it's 2-1, and one. Andy, is it? Is it 2-1? and one? You're right, it's 2-1. and one. Okay. Uh, three balls, one strike. Thomas There's draws the walk. Loss. Good at bat by Colin Thomas. He will move down to first base, and that'll bring to the plate uh, number twelve senior Cooper Nash. So here you'd kind of like to see Colin's got some good wheels. You'd like to see maybe Cooper take the pitch first pitch and let give Colin a chance to steal that base. There's a called strike on the uh, outside, corner. outside corner. Nice pitch by Mitchell. He gets ahead in the count. No, uh, no balls, one strike. Mitchell fakes over to first base. Thomas dives back safely. Look for Thomas to be running. Good lead. There Here he goes. goes. And takes he no throw. Uh, draw a throw because Thomas got such a nice jump. Really nice job of base running there by Colin Thomas. One and one. Now we need that base hit. Down and in. Two and one. There's a hard hit ball. Yeah, a little, little pop up. Got under it. Pop up to second. Just got under it. Yep. So the Bears uh, go down quietly. Second, you know, second yep. inning in a row. So yep. still six nothing. Noble six, Ardmore nothing after four. We'll be right back on noblebears.tv. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. It's no secret Pioneer Cellular cares about the students of our communities because we're in your communities with more retail locations than any other carrier in Western Oklahoma. It's no secret that we provide opportunities for students to learn remotely with distance learning plans and MiFi devices. We also help these schools live stream their games so family members across the country don't miss the action. We sponsor schools and colleges because your children deserve the best. Pioneer Cellular. It's no secret. Back in Noble, Christian Skaggs for Ardmore, the cleanup batter. Shortstop swings through strike one. 
Bears up 6 nothing. Scotty, looking pretty good. Really nice pitch there by Fisher. Gets ahead in the count. No balls, two strikes. Mitchell uh, waits on deck. Really good pitch by Colin there. Just yep. missed outside just a little bit off the plate. Get him to chase 0-2. Right idea there. Come back with the hard stuff. Skag swings through that pitch for out number one of the fir of the inning. That's going to bring Mitchell to the plate. Is that strikeout number 12, Randy? Yes. Yep, yep 12, 12 strikeouts. Fisher misses outside for ball number one. Colin at 48 pitches, 34 strikes, 14 balls. He's inefficient. Mitchell swings through that one. Good off-speed pitch there on the outside corner. Yeah, and that's the same pitch that he, uh, you know, he had previously thrown to Skaggs, and he didn't get him to chase. Fisher misses up high there. That Skaggs might be one. the hardest hit ball of the day for Ardmore. Yep. Uh, I, would, <laughs> I would definitely say that is definitely the hardest hit ball of the day. So nice job by Mitchell. We found that one down the right field line. 22, the count. Nice breaking ball. Throws him. That's out number two on the inning. And strikeout number 13. 13. Riley Wallace, first baseman up. Hitting in the six hole. This is down. One ball, no strikes, two outs. Bears six, Tigers zero. Fisher misses uh, outside there on Wallace. Just off the plate, two balls, no strikes. Three balls, no strikes. I believe that's the first hitter he's gone 3-0 and on today, I Scott. Think I was thinking it was the first hitter he'd gone 2-0. and I know it's the first hitter he's gone three and zero on. Gets the called strike there. Three balls, one strike, two outs. Nice job by Wallace fouling that pitch back. Man alive, full count. Swings through that one for out number three. And strike out number 14 on the day for Fisher. We're going to go to the home half of the fifth inning. Bears six, Tigers zero. We're going to have a new pitcher uh, for the Tigers as Mitchell's going to be uh, done on the day. What's his final line, Randy? I believe, is that Mitchell still out there? Is it? I believe so. Oh, yeah, you're right. It is. Yep, he's coming back out. Okay. He's at uh, 85 pitches. He's coming out for the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> 85 pitches this early in the season. Um, you know, that's that's a lot of pitches. But and it's weather, too. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, but obviously uh, his head coach knows him, uh, knows him better than anybody. So um, who we got leading off for the Bears? The well, Bears are going to be at uh, number eight in the order. Jake Williams, second baseman, and followed by Kelly. And then top of the order back to Carter Golish. Bears, uh, Bears have left some men on the last two innings. Hadn't, hadn't been able to hadn't been able to get them in. See, yeah, nice job can. by Mitchell uh, the last couple innings of getting yep. zeros uh, up on the scoreboard. Settling so. in a little bit. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, he's getting a little confidence too. All right, so Jake's 0 for 2. He's reached base on two errors, two hard hit balls, but uh, there's a foul ball down the right uh, first base line. He bobbles, which uh, you just don't do with him. <laughs> he's going to beat it out. So no balls, one strike on uh, Jake Williams. There's a called strike. Nice Good pitch by ball. Mitchell. He's really gotten the feel. He's thrown a lot more strikes the last couple of innings, Scott. And he, you know, he's gaining some confidence. And again, we don't have the information about how uh, he may be a young, a youngster. Yeah. So, uh, if he is, which I, I you know, nice strikeouts. Oh. Yeah. So uh, Jake Williams strikes out. Nice pitch by Mitchell. It's his second strikeout on the day. And those of you listening and, and watching at home, uh, you'll you'll learn uh, about me as, uh, and I'm sure Randy's going to be the exact same way as we're gonna, we're going to be complimentary of baseball players, and when they do good things, we're gonna we're gonna compliment them on it. So nice job by Mitchell there getting the K on uh, Williams. So Mitchell misses inside there uh, on Jace Kelly. Jace one for two. Uh, had the double, double in the second then, inning. Uh, in the second, and then hitting the fielder's choice. Hit the pop up that the uh, shortstop dropped, but That's doubled right. off yeah. Jake. Mitchell misses outside there. Count goes to two balls, no strikes. This is down low there. Three balls, no strikes. Three and oh. Bears like to get a base runner here. Yeah, and so three and got, oh. Gotta, gotta be a good one. Gotta be one you really want. There's a called strike. So nice job by Mitchell getting the outer uh, outside corner. Now we got 200 people tuned in, Randy, All uh, right. at home watching, listening. So welcome to baseball 2022. It might yeah. be the only baseball we see this year. <laughs> Boy, I sure hope not. Yeah. But if it is, then I'm just fine with that. So uh, Kelly draws the walk. He's going to go down to first base. There's Gullish. So uh, three for three man, right? Carter is. Let's see here. Yeah, three for three, double two singles, two infield singles. Kind of chopped the ball down. Oh. and Oh, pickoff got down. away from the first baseman. Kelly hustles down to second. Nice job by Jace getting down to second base, using those wheels, the aforementioned wheels by wheels. All right, he's in scoring position, so. Well, and look where your left fielder is, Randy. We've been uh, talking he, about it all he's afternoon. He's inching over there. Uh, he's, he's, I'm telling you. I don't know, man. One of these bears hits the ball down the left field line. I'm telling you, you're going to run all that. Scotty, you and me might get a double yeah, on I, that. I know I'm getting at least a single. So. <laughs> so that ball gets away from the catcher and goes back to the backstop, and Kelly moves over to third base. I think that's wild pitch number three or four. That's uh yeah, that's yeah, they've they've thrown a few to the to the back. Threw in the dirt and missed a few. All right, so runner on third, nobody or one out. Gullish. Mitchell misses Just inside. Missed inside. Yeah, pretty good pitch. You know, missing in or being in the middle of the plate. Here's, a, here's another chopper foul. But you know, you really gotta. And of course, I know it's high school. Not everybody can, not everybody can throw it exactly where they want to every time. But if you're gonna play your left fielder that far over, you do not want to be throwing on the inside part of the no. plate. There's that a, was a pretty pitch. Strike. That's a nice pitch by Mitchell. Yep. Evens the count. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Jace Kelly at third base for the Bears. Carter Golish in the box. 
Nice job of laying off that yep. by Golish. Good take. Yeah. Tried to get him to chase, didn't he? Yep, he did. He was thinking about it. Yeah. Three balls, two strikes. Lay off pitch. Oh, swings through it. Yeah. Nice job by Mitchell getting the strike out there on Golish. Yep. That was that was good a good pitch outside corner at the knees. <clears throat> Carter just swung over the top of it. So we got two out, runner on third. Need to get that run home. Yeah, we really need to go, you know, get at least one run this inning and uh just give you a little bit Chase of Chase it over three. He's flied out, grounded out, and struck out. And so it, it, those of you at home, uh Anglin was calling for timeout, but home plate umpire Lance Knight did not grant him timeout. So Mitchell threw the pitch, and it's a called strike. And then Anglin hits a hard ground ball to the second baseman that he fields. Throws it in the dirt, but nice nice save over there by Yeah, by the first baseman, first baseman uh, Wallace. Riley Wallace. Nice job of digging it out. So the Bears go down quietly for the third inning in a row. Uh, goose egg up there. Yep. Uh, so the score remains Bears 6, Ardmore Tigers 0 as we head to the top of the sixth inning. Top of the sixth. All right, y'all come back with and, and join us here on NobleBears.TV. We'll be right back. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at scordle.com slash stream. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horse, and we are here to help. Okay, welcome back to Noble. Uh, we are headed to the top of the sixth inning. <clears throat> uh, Bears six and the Ardmore Tigers zero. Leading off for the Tigers, Hernandez. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, spread the word. Uh, tell your friends and family if you're watching at home and you got, you're going out of town on business or you're traveling, whatever the case may be. You have an aunt and an uncle that live in you know, St. Louis. Uh, we're on uh, Noble Baseball can be found on Twitter at at, no, at Baseball Noble, and then we can be found on Facebook as well. Uh, Noble Baseball. Oh, and there's a bunt down the first uh, third base line. Thomas comes up. Oh, beat it out, and he beats the bunt out. I thought Thomas did a really nice job there, Randy. Of, yeah, it was a good building bunt. that and. He laid it down. That's the first uh, first base runner for the Ardmore Tigers. We're at the bottom of the lineup, 8-9 eight, eight, coming up. Um, Hobbs is the DH. He had, He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Oh, and he got oh, him picked got off. Him picked off. So nice pickoff by nice Fisher pick there. That was Hernandez at first base, correct? Yes. Yeah. Center so fielder. You kind of you kind of feel for the Tigers there. They work so hard to get a yep. base runner on, and you know go yep. five five innings without getting a base runner, and then you get that bunt. That nice job by Hernandez on the bunt, by the way. But he gets picked off at first base. One out for Hobbs. There's a called strike. Fisher gets ahead 0-1. And, yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're at Noble High School Baseball on Facebook, at Baseball Noble on Twitter. Um, 
yeah, just uh, go follow us. Uh, if you need any information on games, it's going to be on Facebook. Uh, Coach Hughes does a nice job with social media <clears throat> and getting the schedule for the week out there every week. And then, um, yeah, so – and then you can always join us on uh, – noblebears.tv. We're going to try to broadcast as many games as we can uh, away from Noble. And uh, there won't be very many games. We'll do every home game for sure. Uh, and myself uh, and Randy will be here doing those. Fisher misses uh, down and away. Hobbs works the full count here with one away in the sixth. Foul ball. He almost hit that right out of Braden's glove, it looked like. Yeah. No catching up to that one. Nope. Hobbs goes down swinging. Strike out number 15? 15, I believe, yeah. Fifteen strikeouts, two out here in the sixth. And nine hole hitter, Andrew Mendoza, the right fielder up. And uh, as most of the Ardmore Tigers have done, he struck out his first time up. Yeah, and I think they actually have a pinch hitter. Oh, we got uh, a pinch hitter in three, there. I think is what they said, and that is Miko Ariola. There's the first pitch by Fisher, by Ariola for a called strike. Nice fastball there. Strike number two. And oh. Ariola swings through the pitch for strike number three and out number three of the inning. That's going to do it. No, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was watching the players all yep. head towards the. There's your uh, yeah. congregate down the left field line right. here. But uh, Mitchell's back out. How he's many pitches thrown, is he at? He's thrown zeros at us the last three. <laughs> he is at 101 pitches. Wow. Uh, well. Collins at 71. How long do you think they'll go with him today? I have a feeling that was – Collins will go out there for one more inning. He'll, he'll finish. Yeah. But he won't go above 80, 85 pitches. So, if I had to guess. Yeah. Just, you know, stick well, with guessing Well, no need there. to. He's, uh, you know, of course, you don't say anything about the no-hitter till it's broke up. But right. now that it's broke up, it's yeah. like, well, you know, <laughs> let's uh, – got this one under control, looks like. So, on the day, Colin Fisher – uh, 15 strikeouts, 16. 16 strikeouts. 16 strikeouts, one hit, uh, six innings pitched. How many balls, how many strikes, Randy? So he's 71 pitches, uh, 48 strikes, 23 balls. Yeah. And he's coming to bat right now. So Colin has tripled, walked, and flied out. Hit the ball well in the center field and made a, made a good play on him. Last time up. You got a better view of the home crowd here, Randy. What uh, what's our what's our fans look like down there? Well, on this side, on our, our mostly side. they look cold, <laughs> Scotty. But uh, 
you know, the lawn chairs are all uh, lined up and uh, all full. There's about oh, There's a dozen students, looks like. Ball hit down the right field line by Fisher. That's going to be at least two. And that's going to be, they're going to hold him at second base. Second. So, uh, a triple, a double. Single? Single? Or, uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm already on level. Level's <laughs> two for three with two singles and a fly out to the fence. Uh, no, that's two. That's a, a double and a triple for Colin. Okay, gotcha. And that's going to be Graves coming out to run for Colin. Zach Graves, Jr., number 22 for the Bears. And uh, as Randy mentioned, uh, Chris LaBelle hitting for the Bears now. Nice job of uh, getting her over there and making that stop by the, the catcher, Calvin Mendoza. That was, that was a tough pitch yeah. to handle. Breaking ball in the middle of the left-handed uh, batter's box. Yeah. This is down. Good job by Chris. You know, sometimes when, you, when you're when you hot like Chris, you get anxious, you know. You just can't wait to hit that ball. Mm -hmm. you, you find yourself chasing a little bit, but good patience on the first two pitches. There's a called strike on the outside corner from Mitchell. Yep. Two balls, one strike. Hard to do anything with that. Good That's breaking ball. Good breaking ball, yep. Evens the count at two and two. Two, two. You got to protect now. Well, I know we've mentioned it a couple times, but we really need to get that run. You know, we need Graves to come around and yeah. score. And like to finish strong offensively. You're yeah. in control of the game, and but uh, left a lot of guys on base the last few innings. And well, and you got to turn around and go down to Ardmore tomorrow night. Yep. So go see him tomorrow. We don't want to give him anything to feel good about. A hard ground ball. Hot shot. Yeah, nice job by Chris Lavelle. And that's going to, he's waving him around. Coach is waving around uh, the runner, and he'll score. Another RBI single. RBI number what, eight for LaBelle on the season? Uh, yeah, he's at uh, number, 16. number seven. Number seven? Yep. That's pretty good for uh, less than two, two complete games played. Yep. So here's Braden. He needs to barrel up one for him. Here, give him some oh, good eye there. Yep. Mitchell misses on the outside. Yeah, you want to finish strong. You don't want to give Ardmore any moral victories or anything going in. Like, okay, well, we played them even the last four innings or right. whatever. You don't want to. You don't want them going home feeling good about <laughs> anything, right? No, you do not. One ball, one strike on Harper. Mitchell misses inside, ball two. Harper 0 for 2 on the day, hit by pitch as well. There's oh, a there's hard a ground good, ball oh, into center job. field. Scoots past the second base baseman, hit. base First. hit for Harper. LaBelle moves over to third base. So Lovell was on the move there, and that's what allowed that ball to get through. Yep. That The second baseman was moving over to cover the bag, so a little hit and run action there, and that's how you draw it up, yeah, Scott. That's uh, well executed by Brady. First so. and third, yep. Hit that ball right where that second baseman was. Yep. So good job and hit it hard. And so Derek Davis on to run for the catcher, Harper. And that's going to bring to the plate number 33, Colin Thomas. Colin has walked twice and struck out today. So he's looking to put the put the ball in play here. Well, and I think Coach Hughes is looking to get Derek Davis to second base, but he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to give up an out in the process. So I'm thinking... Yeah. I think a call strike. 
You got first and third with nobody out. And Colin Thomas at the plate. One and one. Need to get that run home here, Scott. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, I think the the run rule might be in effect if we do, Randy. Uh, yeah. I think it's eight after eight after five. Eight after, yeah. So. So that'll make the the decision on what to do about sending Colin back out or not easy. We exactly. could just run in. Yep. That might have been what Coach Hughes was talking about down the left field line. <laughs> Boys, let's just finish this let's thing. Let's finish this, get, get warm. I'm cold. I got a JV game to get through, exactly. too. <laughs> oh. All nice right. job uh, by Derek Davis. He scoots over to second base. Uh, the pitcher, Mitchell, thought about throwing to second base, but then yep. thought twice because Lavelle was – Leading off third and had a pretty good lead, so Mitchell misses outside there. Makes the count three balls and one strike. Yeah, he did that old uh, thing you never see work, the fake to third and to go back to first. Well, it did work, but uh, he didn't uh, didn't end up making the play and retiring the runner at first. Ball four, so they're loaded. Yeah, and I think uh, what we'll do, Randy, is – and that's going to bring – I'm sorry, uh, bring to the plate number 12 and senior Cooper Nash. Cooper Nash. Bases are loaded. Thomas Nobody out. First. Nobody out. Here comes the coach again. This is third visit. But the first one since the, uh, what, second inning, really. Uh, yeah, the second or third inning, yeah. I think, is when he made that second trip. So – But I think what we'll do, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you uh, watching from home and, and listening, we'll leave this, the stream um, going. Uh, Randy and I will step away uh, once this game's over, and we'll leave the stream going as long as we can so you guys can enjoy uh, the JV game portion of the game of the night. So a lot of good talent on the JV team. Uh, some good freshmen coming in, so... Uh, Dawson Davis, Bryson Carey uh, are just a couple of the freshmen. Uh, Colton Williams is another freshman that's uh, played really well um, on Friday night uh, against the Purcell Dragons. Uh, Mitchell misses down and away for ball number one of the at-bat. Cooper has hit the ball hard today, but there's nothing to show for it. He's grounded out, lined out, and flew out. And Cooper gets that, that ball the inside line. the line. He's going to have at least a double. One run comes around. Two run runs comes in. around. Comes three runs come around. And he's got a triple, down, right a triple down the right three field run line. Triple. Yeah. Very nice. Nice job by Cooper Nash. And that might that may be, be ball game. They're calling yeah. the game. Yep. Yep. So, so uh, that. We run rule in effect. Yeah. Run rule in effect. Makes it 10 to nothing Bears. Um, they get win number two on the young 2022 season. Coach uh, Hughes gets his second win as the Noble head coach. And Colin Fisher gets uh, his first win of many uh, this season. So on the night, or I'm sorry, on the afternoon, who led us in hitting, Randy? So the Bears are uh, had ten put up ten runs on eleven hits. Um, let's see here. Well, I know we uh, Fisher had the sixteen strikeouts, right? Right. Let's see here. Why don't we take a break and we'll come back okay. and we'll have those yep, stats. We'll do that. We'll be right back on noblebears.tv and we'll recap uh, today's uh, 10 to nothing win over the Ardmore Tigers. Y'all come back.
it time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Okay, welcome back uh, to Noble High School Baseball Field. Uh, I am Scott Harper with NobleBears.tv, and I'm going to give it to Randy Kersey, and he's going to go over some stats from this afternoon's uh, 10 to nothing win over the Ardmore Tigers. So Bears in control pretty much the whole game, Scott. And uh, hitting-wise, uh, pounded out 11 hits in 28 at-bats, uh, led by Chris Level again, uh, three for four. Um, Chris drove in three runs, uh, all singles but hard shots, and then hit a, hit a long fly ball to left that was caught, caught at the fence. Uh, along with him at three for four, uh, Carter, Carter Golish had another good night, scored two runs. Three for four hitting, had a double. Um, Colin Fisher, uh, after a, a slow start Friday night and a little batting cage work undoubtedly this weekend, was two for three, hit the ball hard, had a double, a triple, drove in a run. Um, so those were kind of the leading hitters. And then, of course, uh, uh, Braden Harper, one for three, uh, uh, had a good single on a hit and run play there in that last inning, set up that winning run. And then, uh, of course, Cooper Nash with the triple, one for four, but hit the ball hard every at bat, but uh, one for four, three RBIs. So uh, strong finish for Cooper. And exactly what we were talking about, Scotty, you don't want to send Ardmore home. They they kind of blanked us two or three innings in a row there. You don't want to send them home feeling good about themselves, and I don't think we did. No, absolutely not. I think uh, you send them home with a little bit of doubt in their mind now as as they welcome the Bears to, to Ardmore tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m. So, yeah, I mean, uh, all in all, uh, continue to hit the ball well, pitched well again tonight. Uh, you couldn't ask for two better starts from Kaysen and Colin right. uh, in games one and two. Uh, you know, Colin or Kaysen was really good last Friday night against the Dragons at Purcell. Uh, obviously, Colin was uh, excellent this evening, 16 Ks. Yeah, so very six, efficient. Yeah, six innings, um, no runs, no hits, and faced the minute with our one hit, the one bunt hit, single, hit. Yep. but picked him off. Yeah, so he faced the minimum. <laughs> the, didn't even throw a pitch after yeah, that either. Faced the minimum number of hitters. So uh, six innings, sixteen strikeouts, no walks. Uh, a really good, uh, really good first night. Mid-season performance for uh, yeah. Collins. So. Yeah, I'm throwing a double and a triple. So yeah. uh, Not yeah. too bad. Not too shabby. Yeah. So, Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's it for Randy and I this evening. Uh, we're going to leave the stream on so you can watch the JV, uh, the Noble JV and Ardmore Tiger JV play. Uh, like I said, uh, some good young talent will be out there uh, on the field. Uh, we won't be commentating, but uh, be sure to watch out for uh, Dawson Davis, Bryson Carey, Devin Knight uh, may or may not be out there uh, this evening. Uh, Colton Williams, uh, Trevor Rudd will probably uh, see some time in the JV game. Uh, Max Savage, uh, Tanner Sandelbach, Stephen Gwynn are just some of the Bears that will roll out there here shortly. So we'll leave the stream up for you guys to watch that as long as we can. Uh, join us tomorrow night as Randy will be solo most likely. Uh, due to me having to work late and the game being in Ardmore, he'll most likely be on his own. But uh, hopefully I'm back with you guys on Thursday. Again, uh, Thursday, uh, Friday night's game or Friday afternoon's game has been switched to Thursday afternoon. So uh, join us at five, 4 p.m. on uh, Thursday afternoon when the Bears welcome the Choctaw Yellow Jackets yep. in town. So good program in six A. So yep. be a good challenge. Uh, Coach Shane Hawk does an excellent job, and and I know quite a few of the the young men that play for those uh, that Yellow Jacket team. Uh, really good kids, good families. Uh, they play excellent baseball in Choctaw. So it'll be a great great matchup. So uh, we thank you for joining us this evening on NobleBears.tv. We'll see. Uh, hope to hear and see from you. Uh, see you guys uh, tomorrow night. Thank you so much.
targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. It's no secret Pioneer Cellular cares about the students of our communities because we're in your communities with more retail locations than any other carrier in western Oklahoma. It's no secret that we provide opportunities for students to learn remotely with distance learning plans and MiFi devices. We also help these schools live stream their games so family members across the country don't miss the action. We sponsor schools and colleges because your children deserve the best. Pioneer Cellular. It's no secret. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nicks and Diesel Horse, and we are here to help. time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information.
It's no secret Pioneer Cellular cares about the students of our communities because we're in your communities with more retail locations than any other carrier in Western Oklahoma. It's no secret that we provide opportunities for students to learn remotely with distance learning plans and MiFi devices. We also help these schools live stream their games so family members across the country don't miss the action. We sponsor schools and colleges because your children deserve the best. Pioneer Cellular, it's no secret. Stream with Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, and we are here to help. time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. It's no secret Pioneer Cellular cares about the students of our communities because we're in your communities with more retail locations than any other carrier in Western Oklahoma. It's no secret that we provide opportunities for students to learn remotely with distance learning plans and MiFi devices. We also help these schools live stream their games so family members across the country don't miss the action. We sponsor schools and colleges because your children deserve the best. Pioneer Cellular, it's no secret. Stream with Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. 
Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend,